Hello, I'm Glenn Sherwood. I'm often asked how I'm related to Vinnie Ream, the woman sculptor, as I was awarded a research fellowship from the U.S. Capitol Historical Society in 1989 to produce a comprehensive illustrated biography on the artist. I knew that I was related to the Ream family, but I went into it not knowing much about the family history. My half-sister Marjorie knew the most. She was 13 years older. She had been a librarian and a reporter at the Pantograph newspaper in Illinois, where we had lived. When Marge died of cancer in 1987, I decided to do more research. About all I had was the article in American Heritage magazine by Stathis and Roderick of February 1976 and the U.S. Capitol Guidebook of 1973 that had a page on Vinnie Ream. The local library had the young adult book by Hall, published in 1963, that was partially fictionalized, and I read the 1949 book by Hubbard that was highly fictionalized. I did a lit search, and I also saw the book Vinnie Ream's husband, Richard L. Hoxie, compiled in 1908 that had no biography. I used those books as a starting point, and I wrote to other sources seeking information. Vinnie had been mentioned in other books, but no other books dedicated to her appeared to exist. I wrote to the U.S. Capitol seeking information, and the Historical Society sent me a letter about research fellowships. I sent them a proposal on writing a new Vinnie Ream illustrated biography, and they accepted. So I went to Washington, D.C., and met with the Society President Fred Schwengel, who had been a congressman from Iowa. He had led the effort to have the broken scroll on the Lincoln statue repaired in 1962. Vinnie Ream had been featured in the Society's U.S. Capitol Guidebook since 1963. I had asked the Society for $9,000. They only gave me $3,000, but that was enough to do the initial research. I traveled to several states to look at every collection of documents I could find, and I took 35 millimeter photographs of artifacts. The largest collection was the Hoxie family papers at the Library of Congress. I spent a couple of days looking at that and making photocopies of scrapbooks. I had correspondence in the collection microfilmed to do more research later back in Colorado. The prints and photographs division had some images I could copy. I ultimately visited many research collections in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere over a period of about 10 years to create the 1997 book and video I completed in 2001. One of the first things I did was try to pin down my family link. I had a family reunion document from 1930, but I needed more. I found a book by Dr. Denniston, who had done a lot of research on the Ream family, and I was able to learn my link to the artist with those two sources. I made a chart to show the relationship. The chart is also on the VinnieRiem.com website in the article in the links section on my link to the family. I am on this as a eighth generation, and Vinnie is on it as a fifth generation. The American progenitor was Johann Eberhard Rehm, originally spelled R-I-E-H-M in Germany, who had emigrated from Germany in 1917 and brought his family to the Penn Colony, where they received a land grant of 200 acres in May 1719 from the son of William Penn. Johann was said to have been a baker. The name was Americanized to Rehm, R-E-A-M, but there could be 90 different variations in the spelling. They were Palatines, who came from Lymen in the Heidelberg area of Germany to escape religious persecution. King Louis the Fourteenth of France had become infamous for the persecution of Protestants within his realm. It was said that invading French troops had burned down their church. 
This was rather strange, as some sources show Reims as being linked to the French Huguenots, or Huguenot, if you prefer that pronunciation, or Calvinists. There was a Celtic tribe called the Ramai in the Reims area of northeast France in the first century BC, which is only about 200 miles from the German Palatinate. There was an article at vinnyream.com in the links section on the European roots of the family for more on this. The family connections really become nebulous earlier than the 16th century. They had occupational names. A reamer was said to be a harness maker. They were good horsemen, and the area then was called the Holy Roman Empire. This was a large family. Johann Eberhard Rehm and wife Anna Schwab had 11 children. I'm related through the Nicholas Rehm branch, and Vinny is related through the Matthias Rehm branch. My great-great-great-grandfather Abraham Rehm in my grandmother's line was also the father of Vinnie Reem's grandmother, Barbara Reem, who married Vinnie Reem's grandfather, John Frederick Reem. I learned later that both John F. and Abraham were Revolutionary War veterans. My mother also has a connection to the family through Magdalena Reem, who was a daughter of George F. Reem, my great-great-grandfather in that line. Magdalena was a great-grandmother of Verna Henry, my mother Evelyn Rausch's mother. George F. Reams' son, George W. Reams, settled in Kansas, and his daughter, Alice Reams, married my grandfather, Cyrus Sherwood, in 1880 in Illinois. They were Kansas pioneers in the 1880s. Alice's father, George W. Reams, had a sod house about seven miles west of Scott City, Kansas, Alice and Cyrus had been born in Ohio. They also had a sod house about one mile west of Arnold, Kansas. George F. Rehm, the father of George W. Rehm, had emigrated to Ohio from Pennsylvania. I know Abraham was George F. Rehm's father because George F. was mentioned in his will as having moved to Ohio. His son, George W. Rehm, my great-grandfather in that line, was born there and move westward to Kansas. To make a long story shorter, Jack Hofer helped me get the book finished when publishers had little interest. Bob Schramm did the cover design, Mike Kitely did photo retouching, and I did tech support myself. We had the book printed by Thompson Shore of Michigan, the best book printer in the country. Initial book sales came from direct mail to libraries, it was in 100 major libraries in 30 states by 2003. But when the book did not sell well, I entered a partnership with two writers and a producer to make a documentary. And when the producer failed to produce, I made the documentary myself. But it ultimately ran on some top PBS affiliates, such as KLCS Los Angeles and WNYE New York, distributed through the subnetwork. A shorter eight-and-a-half-minute version won a professional division award at the My Hero International Film Festival in 2014.